We have to make sure that the politicians are held accountable. Every administration had the ability to put a ban on asbestos. When it comes to asbestos, it really is about power, money, uh, and politics. Good morning. These short people. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Anyway, here I am talking about Libya again. I have to bring it back every year to ADAO. But what we learn in Libya obviously means a lot to other people also. And uh, I want to go through this pretty quickly. I want to first talk a little bit about Libya Amphibole and then kind of talk about the challenges in diagnosis detection, which is something that's critically becoming more critically important with all the so-called legacy asbestos around and along with Libya Amphibole. And there's the uglier part of Libya. I show the pretty part, and then we, sh we look at the ugly part. This is the Vermiculite Mountain, three and a, uh, about three and a half million tons of ore that was contaminated with fibrous amphibole, was mined at this site, um, processed into a final ore product, and then, of course, brought down to the railway and transferred around the country to all these sites. I think we all have seen that before, or not everybody may have. But you can see just the enormous distribution of this contaminated material. Now, when we talk about homes and how many in America have, are insulated with this, one of the end products of this vermiculite ore, in other words, zonal, zonalite attic insulation, if you don't think it's 15 to 20 million homes, you're, you're fooling yourself when that, with that kind of a mass of ore that left the community. And of course, that's just what it looks like. Many, Many people we run into were involved in insulating their homes with this. And normally they put their younger people up there because it was easier for them to get around in the, in the attic and, and move the insulation around and get it distributed through, through, uh, between the rafters. And of course, within this uh, insulation, remember it's probably, it was considered safe because it was less than 1% by mass in terms of the finished product of zonalite attic insulation. But within that, this is what you would see. This is insulation that's magnified where you can see the bundles of living amphibole within this. Large amounts of it, once you disturbed it, very high levels of ambient uh, contamination occurred. Now this is, uh, I'm just gonna show you this real quickly. This is a lady that uh, moved to Libby in 1990, which was when the mine had closed, but they lived outside of town about 13 miles. And they lived in a house that was uh, an older place, an older structure, and they didn't know anything about it, but it was wood floors and they vacuumed it twice a week. Well, she came in in the two, early 2000s to see us and had a normal x-ray you'll see on the left. And um, she developed problems with pleurisy a few years ago and um, started on one side and then she ended up getting a thoracoscopy and had a very obvious uh, pleural fibrosis going on in her chest very consistent with asbestos-related disease. And you'll see on, the, on your right, uh, this is where she has developed now pleurisy on both sides. For the last two years, she hasn't been able to take a decent breath. She hasn't been able to sleep a full night. And uh, the uh, pleurisy uh, persists. And it's now subsiding some, but uh, she's lost a lot of lung function already. And uh, the sad part is this. She raised a family, she had two kids, Grew up in the house for 12 years. Her husband, I said, bring him in. He's got pleural disease also. It's a sad story and they're sitting there waiting for their kids to do something. And so it's a very, very strange, strange situation. And this is what the inside of the chest looks like. You'll see these very dense adhesions. And it basically these adhesions close off the chest cavity and uh, literally uh, bind the, the, the lung to the chest wall. And this, these, are, these are the latest NIOSH observations on asbestosis mortality by county in the U.S. And you'll see Lincoln County, Montana is the highest, once again, in, over this period of time, the high, has the highest uh, mortality rate from asbestosis. So how does this happen? How, how could we miss all of this? Um, well, you know, I want to briefly touch on something that's very timely. Uh, and that's on the scoping document the EPA uh, uh, produced last uh, June. And you'll see on this, uh, it totally ignored Libby Amphibole. 
because it's not asbestos, right? It makes sense, right? You leave it out. It's all over the country, but it's not a risk. And uh, so, uh, and then on top of that, add, add to it, of course, all the other legacy asbestos, which is enormous. And uh, it's just a, a sad thing when we know the consequences of this, of what happens with exposure to this material. So anyway, how do you make the diagnosis? Well, it's, it, it really, in a way, hasn't changed over time in terms of the methods, uh, or at least the approach. You have to have sufficient exposure and a latency period to allow time for the uh, body a biologic response to the material. And then you have to find evidence that there's some biologic response to uh, the fibrous material. And, uh, and then, of course, rule out any confounding uh, problems. But the problem is, and uh, Christine talked about this, and this is a big bug uh, we deal with, is that uh, no exposure histories are taken. The, the most important thing you do in this whole process is do an extensive exposure history. The patient shouldn't have to go looking and figuring out what happened. We should be the ones that are out there, uh, you know, making sure that we are checking on this and we are finding out where people get exposed and know about it and know how to ask about it. And uh, if, they're not, if your provider's not asking, they're not looking. And if they're depending on a radiologist to pick it up with no other information, that's not very logical either. So uh, tissue is of limited benefit also. It's seldom available. We don't do invasive things when there's a high exposure history. And of course, uh, you know, uh, some findings on x-ray that are compatible, so we usually don't get it. When you do get it, there's still problems with that because many times there's non-specific fibrotic changes, uh, and so it never, it can't, it's not necessarily the diagnostic uh, gold standard in any way. Uh, what we found in our experience is chest x-ray is very insensitive. Of uh, all the cases we have that are positive on a CT scan, X-ray would pick up only about 20% of those. So for pleural disease, I should say, I should qualify that. So B reading and those types of things are of limited benefit. And then to top it off, CT of the chest, used to, we used to think that would be the gold standard, but what we find out is, is observers can only agree about a moderate degree of the time about the same findings on that particular study. So once again, we don't really have real good methods, do we? So. Uh, and what, why is that a problem? Well, think about Libby. We're just finishing our, uh, the EPA is finishing up their portion of the cleanup and uh, we'll be moving into a uh, period of time when the community and the state of Montana pick up the responsibilities of maintaining that remedy over time. And uh, in this process, uh, can you imagine monitoring a Superfund site with all the disease that's, uh, and death that has occurred in Libby and monitoring with a tool, a CT scanner, to find out in 30 years that your remedy is failing. I mean, I think that's, that's it's not very comfortable, let's put it that way. And then, uh, during this process, recontamination is also another issue. How are you gonna know with re if recontamination of your community is going on as you unearth areas to build, to do those various things? Of course, we got institutional controls that are being developed to try to control those aspects of it. But uh, you, clearly, we need better detection methods. And uh, we need it for the folks that are exposed in their workplace to legacy asbestos. I think Steve's right, we gotta find another name for that. But anyway, um, you know, these clearly are areas we need to start working on. And uh, how do you do this? Well, we could improve surveillance, but that's a, been a challenge. I think everybody sees that. Uh, anyway, what you, what you don't know about, you won't see, and of course that's typically with the, the hidden picture, you know. You see one thing, but if I tell you to look for something else, you'll find it in that picture. There's a whole list there. And uh, we don't have time to look at all of it, otherwise we'd take the challenge. Um, and how do we find this stuff? This is on the right of that, that white stuff is a thin sheet of fibrosis typically seen in the, with the Libby amphibole exposure, but it's hard to see on x-ray unless you know what you're looking for. So what are we gonna do going forward? Well, we gotta work on advancing our computers 
in, the, in looking at scans and figuring out better settings on windows and ways to detect a thinner layer of fibrosis, at least in our patients, but it's, it would serve all well. Move toward a digital interpretation. That's happening around with, uh, with uh, asbestosis, sprinkable lung disease, also needs to occur with pleural disease. And then uh, continue to search for blood markers for early uh, response to asbestos particles. And uh, there's opportunities now with the technology that's, that we can now start doing much more of this work. We have a population that is uh, large enough to really try to understand this better, and that's what we're working on currently. But until then, here's what we depend on. ADAO, and I want to thank, before I, as I'm done here, I want to thank Glenda. She's always been there for everybody and for us and Libby. She's been our voice in many places also. And I do want to thank Mike Harbett, because when I started this in 2000, I said, this, this looks miserable. I don't know if I'm going to get into this. And Mike said, no, you'll get better than anybody else at it. And he just kept pushing me. And so he's been a great support for us. I wanted to acknowledge him too. Thank you.